Hi, I'm Chip. I'm a computer chip. I'm also called a microprocessor, but you can think of me simply as the brain that controls your computer. I'm probably the most complex product manufactured in the world, but I'm not much bigger than your fingernail. I'm packed with billions of microscopic switches called transistors that make me work. Come along with me. I'll show you my journey inside Intel from when I'm first created to when I'm shipped to customers. Before I become the beautiful, complex square that you see, I begin as an idea in the minds of chip architects. These amazing engineers work with logic and circuit designers to create computerized drawings, which eventually become the blueprints for my transistors and layers that make up my complex circuitry. You see, I might look extremely thin, but I'm made up of about 30 layers that resemble a multi-level highway. Some of the layers form my transistors. Other layers make up the interconnects that tie my transistors together in a very specific configuration. My transistors can switch on and off up to five billion times per second, so your computer can complete tasks. <laughs> but more on that in a bit. First, once the chip architects are happy with my design, they send their blueprints to mask engineers. Mask engineers take those digital blueprints and use an electron beam machine to convert the computer-aided design drawings into a template usable in manufacturing. The machine's electron beam takes that data and replicates the circuitry pattern onto six by six inch pieces of quartz, just a quarter inch thick. These quartz pieces, which we call masks, are stencil-like templates that we use later to build up the circuitry onto a silicon wafer. It can take more than 50 masks to make all my layers. As the mask engineers finish each mask, they send them to fabrication factories, or fabs, to begin manufacturing me. These huge factories are where you'll spot manufacturing technicians in those funny-looking bunny suits. And those curious pizza-sized discs are silicon wafers, made from the silicon extracted from sand. Techs take the masks and use photolithography machines to shine light through them, then through a lens to reduce the image, and then onto the surface of a wafer. They do this repeatedly, using different masks for all my different layers of transistors and wire connections. Eventually, the wafer will be imprinted with hundreds or even thousands of tiny individual chips, like me. From here, the fab sends the finished wafers to die sort prep facilities. In these facilities, diamond saws cut the wafers into thousands of fingernail-sized individual rectangles, each called a die or computer chip. Die and sort prep machines cherry-pick the working chips and then hand them off to yet another machine, which places them onto reels. These are then sent to our assembly and test plants. Here, technicians take each die and test them one last time to make sure they're healthy and good to go. If we pass, we're then mounted between a substrate and a heat spreader to form a sleek, enclosed package. Our exterior package protects us from getting knocked around, heat, and contaminants. Once we go inside a computer, our package also forms electrical connections between us and the circuit board. We've got just one more step before we reach customers, the finished goods warehouses. All Intel assembly and test plants have them. From here, logistics professionals may send us directly to some customers, such as system manufacturers, or they ship us to global distribution hubs. From these hubs, we might be sent out to original equipment manufacturers in trays, or get boxed up nice and pretty for retail. Phew, what a journey, right? So many Intel people from around the globe working together to design, create, and deliver the tiny, amazing chips like me. So every once in a while, give a thought to old Chip here and all of the steps it took me to get from concept to powering the computing devices you depend on every day. <laughs>